grew up in Suffolk, is that right? Yeah, I was, um, went to school in Bury St Edmunds, and that was my hometown for most of my childhood. And then uh, when my family left there, we sort of stayed pretty much around the area. But when I was in my early 20s, I moved to London. So I sort of went from a sort of rural background, but as a child, so I wasn't re really aware of it, um, to go into London and enjoy myself there and the social life and the, the busyness. And then obviously we came down here. And now, unbeknown to me, although I knew it was green and lush, I had no idea why it was so green and lush down here. So uh, when, uh, sure enough, in June 2007, when, the, you know, when we saw the rain and how much it rained, it became very evident as to why it was so beautiful. Um, so that was a bit of a shock to us all, actually. In fact, my husband it's does say, it's very yeah, dry, isn't it? it is very dry, yeah, dry and, and sort of flat and, and beautiful, but um, yeah, rather different than down here. And uh, we hadn't have known that where we were living was one of the driest places in the UK annually, compared to probably here, which is probably one of the wettest. So that was a complete contrast for mm. us. But um, but it's a you know it's a beautiful place, and the the pace of life here. Although we keep very busy with you know having our own business and putting a lot into that and the other things that we do locally, um, the pace of life generally is a lot slower. There's much less traffic on the roads. Things like that really strike you when you come from London. You know even if you go shopping down in Exeter, you can drive there within a short space of time. You can find a car park in a space like that. Mm. It's um, that was most, yeah. one of the most remarkable changes for me. But you were going back and forth to Cardiff as well, weren't you, from Essex, and yeah. before you came down here, and, and it always rains in, we in Wales. So. It does always rain in Wales. So she was, probably, she was probably used to the, rough, to the wet. <laughs> so, but yeah, when you go over the Seven Bridge, it starts raining, so, so yeah. sort of acclimatised to, to get rained upon. Yes, yeah, so a friend who was a black cab driver came down to North Devon on holiday, yeah. on my kind of persuasion. And I asked what he liked about it, and the thing he liked most was there were no speed bumps. Yeah, 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 no worries. I mean, the, the, that's what we, I mean, my husband and I live in a little village on the outskirts of Bampton here, and our, our village is so community based, or so community sort of friendly, and, and we just, you know, we, we thought, my God, it's like living back. I grew up in Cardiff, and it was like yes. growing, hmm. growing back, growing back, going back to Cardiff, growing up in the, you know, 70, 60s and 70s. Because it's just, mm. you know, such a, you feel so safe, you feel, feel so part of the community and, and that you can't, re, you know, can't get that in other parts of the country really, can you? No. That's irreplaceable for me. I think we both, from our background in the police as well, but also from the areas that we lived in, you're just very aware of, well, in particular working in central mm. London, you're so aware of crime all the time. Mm. You know, you have to watch your handbag, watch your purse, watch yourself for your personal safety. And down here, it just isn't an issue, you know. And mm. it took a little while to sort of realise that was the case, you know. And, yeah. and now, you know, before I had a central locking car, I didn't even bother locking my car, you know. And, yes. and you go out and you leave your door, you know, unlocked maybe. When Julia mm. had her dog, she would leave the back door open for the dog and things mm. like that. And you'd, you just take it for granted because you hear so little about crime. And even when you look in the, the weekly paper in the Gazette, I mean, the, the level of crime is just... Mm. It's really sure. Non existent. Yes. I think the week I moved down, I mean, I can yeah. say I come from a rough part of London, yeah. so unless a person died or they were a child, yeah. stabbings didn't even make the local paper. Yeah. yeah. And here, the front page of yeah. the, the area newspaper was yeah. Budgie Returns, and it was an old man's birthday. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like the headline on the Gazette last week was something about some. Polo player. Polo player from Bampton having a crash in his Range Rover. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why that is headline news, but, but that's as exciting as it gets, you know, yeah. in terms of it's, we, I think scandal. We it sort of becomes really evident when our friend Teresa, who's um, a regular visitor to us, because she's um, an old friend of both of ours, but she'll come up and visit and, uh, and stay over at either my, myself or Katrina's. And of course, we'll go to the pub next door where I live, and she'll say, oh, well, did you get the keys? And, you know, you can lock the door. And we're like... We're in the pub next door. What do we lock the door for? You know? And she's, oh, you know, you can see us all like getting all twitchy about locking doors. And but, but and we're like, that's fine. Okay, we'll lock the door just to reassure you. But mm. it's like in here sometimes. We uh, probably when we first came, we were really aware of about you know money, safety of drinks, and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and in particular, in regards to Bampton Fair, we were, you know, told loads of horrific stories about, oh, in the old days, people used to nick this and have fights here. And we were expecting quite an exciting time. Yeah. There's some of our friends going past it. <laughs> oh, that is this time. Yeah, it is. Oh, oh I don't know one. Oh. Two lots. So okay. that used to be us. Yeah. <laughs> I think in the space of the 10 minutes sat here, I've yeah. seen more you know, I know. people here than, than three or four years yeah. ago. Yeah. <laughs> we might even see one walking past in a minute. That'll be a real rarity. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we, um, yeah, talking about Charter Fair, we. We had a lady who worked with us when we first took over in Shirley and 
And uh, she goes, oh, you know, empty your cabinet and clear the window. They'll have everything away. And we're like, okay. So we were like, right, expecting, you know, this rush of people and yeah. all these people to steal everything or clear everything off the walls. And But in fact, it was so yeah. not like that. And we're like, actually, yeah, it's obviously moved on. But There's a few maybe different people around. Yeah. So not your regular locals. So it, if in that sense, it is completely different, which is probably what makes people feel really wary. But in fact, it's... We've never had a single problem, yeah. have we? And, we, you know. we had to chat. Uh, you know, Katrina was, I, do, I can't remember where she wasn't around at the, at the time, but it was Shirley and I again. And, and some chaps walked, walked in and we thought, oh, hello, who's that? Of course, we were still, it was, it, you know, yeah. only we'd been here about six months or a year or so. So we were still a little bit weary of people. And uh, so he came in and he sat down and went, oh, can I get, you? and Shirley was doing that. So I walked over, can I get you a drink of something? Or, oh, can I have a, a mug of builder's tea? We went, yeah, of course, anything. So we make him a tea and, I got chit chatting and I was like, so familiar, familiar, thinking, oh God, have I arrested him somewhere? <laughs> he looked that sort. <laughs> and um, anyway, I got chatting and, and uh, I saw you, you've got a very familiar face. And he, he saw, oh, I've got that sort of face. I saw, are you from around here? And he said, oh no, I'm visiting, I'm, I'm up in London. And I said, oh right, we're part, what part of London? And he said, oh, Holland Park. I said, oh, it's just, I was working around the Wembley area, Kilburn area. Moment. Oh my goodness, another police car. And uh, anyway, he, um, he, he said, oh, Holland Park area. So I was, well, yeah, I know that area. Kilburn, Harlesden, Willsden, yeah, all around there. And um, I said, oh, it's just you've got a very familiar face. He said, oh, yeah, you know, I, I've been told that before. And he said, oh, and you, what, what did you do that was taking you? I said, oh, I was, I was, a, I was a police officer in, in sort of the Metropolitan Police. And he said, ah, oh, cop to cook, eh? I said, oh yeah, something like that. <laughs> anyway, scooted back in the kitchen, chit chat, chit chat, off we went and come back then later for lunch. And in the meantime, I'd gone up to all my cookery books thinking, God, who is he? Is he someone I should know the face of and all this and looking through all anything we had upstairs that might sort of hint. And it turned out it was Michael Pierre White, but I hadn't realised until he sort of came into the kitchen and said to me, what's your name? I went, Julia, in Marco. And he went, well, nice to meet you, you know, thanks for the nice lunch and signed our menu and off we went. But it was, it was just, you know, you sort of feel like you're in, uh, in that sort of bubble of still being protective of your place. But in fact, he was just having a nice day out. <laughs> yeah. We've had a few little visitors over the years, but not, he, that was the most exciting because yeah. we haven't been here very long, have we? No. Oh, and, uh, well. and Julia is, uh, you know, as an aspiring chef, <laughs> obviously now she's a very experienced chef nine years later. Yeah. But as a, uh, yeah, it was. We were like, oh, no, 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 we yeah. were really excited. So you were, you were interested in cookery before you came? Have you yeah. had any formal training? Yeah, yeah. I'd, um, I'd <laughs> trained at um, Catering College. I left school, went two years at uh, Catering College, or college doing catering. And then I went into the hotel business, uh, um, commie chef, that sort of thing. And then moved on to sort of um, contract catering, as it was then, um, you know, in a, in, a big, in a couple of big factories, working as, either as part of a team or, or managing a small team. Um, and then I had the chance um, to come to London. Uh, I, I, was, I got divorced or I was split up from my first husband and came to London uh, with another fella that was m moving to London. So it was a good opportunity to move on life-wise and work-wise. And uh, yeah, I came again managing a small catering unit in London in the city. And I hadn't realised the difference of the city of London to the sort of wider metropolitan area. And um, and yeah, I, have, I, I was always interested in joining the police. And in fact, I'd looked at being a special, a volunteer uh, constable, when I was working in the Monmouthshire area, oh, in Monmouth. But I was working split shifts and I could never really dedicate enough time. So I, um, I sort of happened across a chap walking down the street one day and I said, oh, I was interested, blah, blah, blah. And he introduced me and it just happened to be the City of London Police. And I was a special for about 18 months before I joined the regulars in... January 1990, and then I was working as a sort of part of the training department when Katrina joined, and and we ended up on the same uniform team. So, um, but yeah, that was that was sort of where it started. But now, conversely, I'd had no plans whatsoever to join the police, <laughs> and I was um, I had done a few little jobs here and there, some accounts work and stuff, which you know put me in good place to to have my own business. But um, but I was at the time I was working as an estate agent in London, and I used to work on the Fulham Palace Road. And the police cars used to zoom up and down and up and down really fast all the time, like non-stop all day. Well, at the time, there was a recession going on. This was like the early 90s. Um, so we weren't particularly busy at work. And I had been doing estate agency work for several years by that time. So I was a little bit bored with it. And I remember thinking, oh, I think I'd rather be doing that. 
So that was why I joined. And in fact, as it turned out, some of the officers um, came in to do some surveillance from our office um, on some nearby premises. And uh, my estate agent colleague uh, chatted to them and they came back and brought me loads of literature and an application form. <laughs> so within six months of thinking I wouldn't mind doing that and driving up and down in a fast car, I was I joined. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, it's fair to say you're someone who, who doesn't take a long time to act on ideas. So. No, rash I think it's called. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, you yeah, give her an idea, she runs a mile with yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I guess, no, I just like to have different challenges and, and I've always got different ideas going on in my head. So even when I'm in here serving coffee to someone, I'm busy plotting my next... Uh, manoeuvre, whatever it might be, you know. Yeah, so in London you'd have been on a fairly uh, intense job, and in London anyway mm. is, you know, there's a different buzz and vibe when mm. you go to London, isn't there? Um, and you'd have had all your colleagues, I know mm -hmm. the police, there's a lot of camaraderie mm. in the college, so there was a lot you left behind when you came down. There were any, any parts of you that kind of missed that? Or no, I mean, it was different, not different, it was just so different. I mean, completely, I mean, we were absolutely physically exhausted when we first done yeah. a week or a month here. It was like, oh my God. We both had sort of office jobs at the end of our time in the police. We thought we knew what hard work was. Yeah. So when people said to us, oh, catering's really hard work, we were like, oh, goodness, so's the police. Yeah. Because we used to sometimes do, in our specialist roles that we did, and you know, like I was a family liaison officer and that sort of thing, and Julia was mm. a, um, a sexual offences chaperone and that mm. sort of thing. So sometimes you would work... 20 hour shifts, mm. you know, sometimes longer than that. And yeah. then you would, you know, get two hours sleep and you'd have to be up dealing with your um, victim the next day or mm. whatever. So we thought that was hard work and that is hard work, but it's completely different than having this place. Mm. And uh, when we first came down here, we were working uh, three nights a week and we had plans to do Sunday brunch and all sorts. <laughs> well, my goodness, come Sunday, we were so exhausted, we could hardly move, could we? Yeah, we could hardly get out. We were, do you know, here, so getting up at sort of seven, half seven, we were here and still are on our feet from half, you know, from half eight yes. in the morning. Um, and when we do work in an evening, now we work less evenings, mm. but, you know, we don't sit down again until midnight. Yes. Mm. Um, and we were doing that every Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And okay, as well we, as Tuesday too. Yeah, we were nine Monday. years younger. Obviously, in our, <laughs> in our 20s. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah. but it really standing, took its toll. Yeah. Not moving very far is, is even more tiring than even if you're just walking, I think, because it, the way that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah but we, I'd sometimes I haven't worked for a little while, but I've got a pedometer, and we can do seven miles easily, just up and down the stairs, running. I mean, that's just me, up and down the stairs, back in the kitchen, back out, and, you know, between us mm. up and down here and doing drinks. Yeah. So, so yeah. It's but it is just exhausting because people think often that we, you know, have a little sit down in the afternoon or we, we go home. Sometimes they think we have a little sleep. I don't know how they think we do well, that. Well, they'll ring at half past nine and say, oh, sorry, it's early. I, you know, wasn't sure there'd be anyone there yet. They think the food just magics itself and the cafe gets itself yeah. ready before 10 o'clock. But, uh, yeah. But in that way, it's so different than a regular job. Because, you know, in the police, you always got your refs, didn't you, pretty oh, much? God, yeah. Unless there was a major disaster on. You know, you always had your 15 minutes and then your hour, you know, yeah. or your 45 minutes lunch, and then you probably had another tea break in the afternoon. Yeah. Whereas here, I mean, you know, we can go sometimes the whole day, yeah. and, and we used to sometimes go into the whole evening, and we'd hardly eaten a yeah. thing. Yeah. We were both a lot bigger when we first came. <laughs> <laughs> And running a business has its own pressures, you know, when you're in yeah. the police, your salary is taken care of. Absolutely, and yeah. all the rest of it. Yeah. And uh, just working mm. hard on your own business doesn't necessarily mean you make any money at it. Well, it was more, no. you know, and, and, you know, the sickness side of things and the holiday side of things. And we're like, I, I don't yeah. think we are. I think the first couple of years, we did, we shut in the January, the first, because the ladies that had it for us shut for a whole month in January. So we, when we'd done... In fact, I think we did the whole of June till Christmas before we mm. shut again. I don't think we actually shut that year. So we worked continually, you know, having been used to like four or five, maybe six weeks holiday with the police. And obviously shift work where you'd maybe get three or four days off after a spell of shifts. But, um, but yeah, we, we shut in that month in, Janu in the January. Oh my God, they're back again. Um, because we had the roof and some work done. Ambulance, sorry. And then, um, and then we started eventually mm. taking a, a week in June and then a bit more in September, October and then a bit more at Christmas. Just because yeah. we were like, oh my God, we just can't keep doing it. And after four and a half years, we were like, this is just killing us. We have no life. You've got to, that's it, you've got to work out, you know, especially when it is, it is your own business. And okay, there was, we have a you know, small amount of um, sort of responsibility to minimal staffing. Um, but just in terms of keeping it going for us, you know, we had to make it work for us. 
So, um, you know, we didn't lay anyone off or anything. No, we didn't no. reduce anyone's hours, but we just kept it to a minimum. Yeah. Um, and we reduced the hours that we did. And, uh, and that's worked to our benefit, really. It's, yeah. it's meant that we've been here far longer than we planned to be here for, because it's meant that we've had a bit of a life and we can recover a bit quicker on our days off. You know, mm. the weekend, yes. on a Sunday and Monday, we recover and come back. Bursting with energy. Well, you survive longer than the typical. It's noticeable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, because I've, yeah. I've always had family in the area. I was, mm. I was born yeah. down here, anyway. My parents were, and I've always come back ever since a child. Mm. And you find a nice place to go and have mm. a meal, and you come back the next year, and it's different people. Yeah. yeah. And the turnover seems like that. Places last more than twelve months. They're doing yeah. well. So yeah. it's nine years. I think it's yeah. I think it is really unusual, and loads yeah. of rest and. You know, because we're in the business, you're even more aware of it. Mm. Because every every time you go out, I mean, we eat out quite a lot and go to cafes all mm. the time. But you're really aware about the staff turnover and stuff like that. Yes. And we've had, you know, consistent staff for years. Yeah. We're here all the time. And, um, and it is, you know, really unusual. And I think it is yeah. a feather in our cap that we've managed to make it work. But people well, the, other, the other remarkable thing is, is you know, my dad was an accountant. And he, mm. I remember the childhood experience. He, he had a bit of job during mm. the day and then he did his accountancy business in the evening. Yeah. And, You'd see yeah. people come to the house, and yeah. you'd see this, you know, couple, mm. like a married couple, yeah. where partners would come mm. in, and they'd be all happy and smiling, yeah. starting a new venture. Yeah. And a year or two years would go by, and one of them would come in, looking yeah. many years old, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. the partnership's falling mm. apart. And it, 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 it's very rare, I think, mm. to have a business partnership to last yeah. that long and do yeah. well. So. Yeah. We've been, yeah. We have been, we've yeah. been, we've been really happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've worked at it. You know, it... I mean, Katrina does step over the mark sometimes. So now, she's, <laughs> now she's learned a bit about cooking. She tries to interfere because it's not helping. It's quite interfering. <laughs> but she help thinks it. it's helping. You know? But um, but no, it's you know we 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 had our roles when we came here, and pretty much have stuck with that. In that you know, I try to try to look after the food. She tries to look after the house, and we try and, and keep that consistent. Yeah, it doesn't you know we we do overlap. I don't. Do much front of house, but she does more in the kitchen. We try to but keep yeah. her in the kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I'm in, when I'm out here and I hear <coughs> Julia, I know it's time to go back in the kitchen. As in, I've said too much or I've been out there too long. So, <laughs> so but um, yeah, it just, it's just making it work, isn't it? You've got to make it work. It's it's mm. you've got to have pride in your in your work and you've got to have longevity. Longevity. 